every so often I'll see someone ask about my weird ls command, and I can totally understand why, because this is not the expected output, and there's a very good reason for this, this is an ls, this is an alias, to another program called exa, along with a bunch of other options to provide the look and the output that I want to see. Exa describes itself as a modern replacement for ls, as such including many of the ls features, along with things that you may not expect to see, like say, icons, colours enabled by default, additional sorting features, and a bunch of other little things here and there but it's not intended to be a one-to-one -one replacement for ls. So, what you can do is if you desperately need to run it from your terminal, you can do backslash ls, and there you go. Now, I kind of lied when I said I was using exa, because a couple of days ago, it got replaced with another project called Ezra, and that's sadly because the main exa project is now unmaintained. But if you look at the commit log, it doesn't really look unmaintained. A commit September 6th, commit on October 4th, commit July 20th, May 1st, like it's not a super active project, but it's clearly still being developed. So how in the world is it unmaintained? Well, the story here is a little bit strange. Pay attention to the project owner and then who's been making these recent commits. If we go to the next page, And then the next page, none of these commits are from the project owner. While certain other people have merged and commit rights, the project owner is just completely vanished. So a few days ago, the current, I guess in a sense, maintainer named Aria opened up this issue. Extra is unmaintained, please use the active fork Ezra instead. But this issue is actually a follow-up to an older issue from 2022. Question, is this project still being actively maintained? I see there are no changes in 7 months and 38 open pull requests. Is this project still being actively maintained? Whilst there's certainly been a bit of development since then, the project is still in pretty much the exact same state. The latest release is April 13th, 2021. There are 264 open issues, many of which don't have comments, some of them do, which is certainly nice. The pull requests on the other hand, there are 49 open pull requests, and yeah, these ones don't really have many comments, except for this one for some reason, and some of these open pull requests go back over a year. Some of these really do need to be dealt with. I am not blaming the fill-in maintainer here, they have reasons why the project is like this, but as it stands, the project is not in the healthiest of states, and it didn't really show any signs of getting better. So in reply to this, the current maintainer said, more info, Olcam gave me a lot of rights on this project, though our agreement was still it was his project at the time, but it seems he's less available than ever, but so am I. Less available is certainly one way to put it. On GitHub, Benjamin, otherwise known as Ogham, the last time he was active was in 2021. There was zero commits in 2022, zero commits in 2023. But maybe on some other platform he's been active. This is the last blog post, 2020. The last post on the Exa Twitter was in 2021. And the last post on the personal Twitter was 2022. I would like to believe they're just taking a long-term break, maybe they're focusing on their day job, maybe they're avoiding the internet, but as it stands, nobody really knows, and it could be a lot worse. Nobody's able to get in contact with this person, so it's sort of just up in the air like what's happened to them. Back to the main post. I'm more or less in burnout and also have physical health issues, 100 other things in my life and I couldn't find enough focus to properly review some of the big, older PRs. Looking back through their GitHub, 2019, relatively active, 2020, a lot more active, 2021, about the same, 2022, now it greatly falls off, and 2023, yeah, the year's not done, but it's clearly going to be a lot less. The best way to help is for people to review some of these big PRs. 
especially the Windows one, since I don't know anything about Windows Dev, I could merge PRs that have serious enough reviews. I still want to take care of this project, but I don't know when I'll have time again. Hopefully soon, but well. Edit. Also, as some may be seen, I still worked hard to triage issues, even when I couldn't work on code reviews. So taking a proper look at that commit log, you can see Aria is doing quite a bit of work back in August. There was a bit of work by Martin in July, a bit of work in May by First Dimension, and random other people here and there. Then this guy called Tyrubius comes in, does quite a bit of work. Actually, a lot of work. Ari is here again, but there's no, like, massive concerted effort to get a lot of stuff done. It's clear that they want to keep working on the project, but I can understand that, you know, real-life stuff takes a lot more focus over doing something like this. As is often the case in a situation like this, a lot of people have opinions about what can be done. For example, I think there are some Rust organizations on GitHub where Exit could perhaps be migrated to given the limited availability of maintainers here to review and merge. That should allow for trusted maintainers to keep the project healthy. Regarding this, I deep dived a bit so I'll leave a couple of my sense here. Rust official states the project should have an active maintainer before joining the organization. Something this project does not seem to be having, but I can see it being relevant. Nevertheless, great suggestions. I think the best course of action is contacting r slash rust or other communities for a possible replacement maintainer, and if someone decides they're willing to either contact rust official or create a new organization for exa, in the meantime, a great addition would be a list of PRs that are ready to be merged. One person suggested the LSDRS project, which I know that someone has actually migrated to after all this situation went down. It's a very similar kind of project, but if you're using EXA, I can see why you'd want to keep using EXA. And of course, forking the project like this user did, or making an entirely new project with a very similar sort of vibe, basically a spiritual successor. Like the reason with LSDRS, that one wasn't going to have a massive migration to. But a fork of the project, this could be something reasonable. Now, as I say probably way too much, Making a fork for a project is really easy, but forking a project, that's a little bit more difficult. Often what happens is somebody makes a fork, it goes for a couple of commits, and then pretty much just ends. And that's about what happened here as well. There were a couple of things being done, but it didn't really last very long. Now, there is a very important name in here for the next stage of our story, that being Kafka. So they went and made a package for this over on Nix packages. So there was a brief period where this Zeta fork was being used, but it clearly didn't last very long. Instead, what happened is Kafka would have made their own fork. For a fork to properly happen, someone has to step up and go and get the work done themselves and basically act like the leader of the project. And Kafka did exactly that with their fork. I made another fork. I duplicated all PRs from Exa using a shell script. Currently, I've got 24 out of 63 PRs left, so 39 PRs are closed or merged. And a lot that have been labeled slash gotten comments on next steps. So far, I've found more than a few duplicates. I'm trying to make it so X can pull all the PRs when they're merged, if Exa ever becomes active again. And that is the new repo. Ezra. Currently merged includes SE Linux context support, Git repo statuses, hyperlink support, and relative time. I'm working through the PRs now and seeing how many I can get through this weekend. I've made a first pass on all the PRs, but there are many places I'd like to get some feedback, and I'm also looking for people willing to test PRs. I've also updated some dependencies as there were a lot of security issues, and for some reason, there was this one person downvoting every post. They never explained why they were downvoting them. I guess they just didn't like the idea of a fork for some reason? At the time, Ezra did have one little problem. Like with Exa, it was attached to this person's personal GitHub. Now, Aria did suggest a slight different change, not specifically regarding this fork, more just about a fork generally. Ideally, I would like to create a community-owned fork so we could start having new releases under a proper org. I didn't have bandwidth to do then, and I don't have it now. At least go launch the thing alone. 
Kafka replied by saying, I'd really love if you could take a look at Ezra. I and a few others have already gotten a lot of backlog and bugs cleared, and I'd be fine with adding you as a contributor and down the line creating a community org. Keep the ball rolling. I created Ezra Community. This is the Ezra GitHub org. And transferred the ownership of Ezra to it. For now, I've invited you, Esther and Cypher. Both these people were involved earlier in the thread. If anyone else wants to join the efforts, they should feel free to ping me. Of course, all of you are free to go in some other direction. I just am trying my best to take initiative on this so we don't end up in a situation again where we are months without progress. Since last Friday, we've gone from 63 open pull requests from Exa to 16. As it stands today, Ezra is in a pretty good state. Yes, it has 17 open pull requests, and some of these are from quite a while ago. For example, this one here is a copy of an Exa PR from 2022. But, it is being discussed, and it is being worked on, and eventually may end up actually being merged. As for the issues, there's only 25 open issues. Once again though, these are actively being discussed, and actively being worked on, some of which are probably going to get resolved relatively quickly. Now, there was one issue regarding Ezra, that being the name. So going forward, the project won't continue as Exa. I'd have thought that would have been ideal to retain the name, and Ezra was going to merge all the work back into Exa, which would then be migrated to an organization to ensure ongoing maintenance slash development continues without this issue occurring again. And there's a very simple reason why the name Exa isn't being used. Without Ogham's stamp of approval, I thought it was wrong to take the name, which I can totally understand. People were still trying to contact Ben, and it wasn't going to happen. Some through the GitHub, some through email. Nobody's getting a response about it. So it seems like Ezra is the name that's going to be used. On Ezra, there has been a couple of releases, last one just being yesterday, but a bunch of others also happening. And it seems like the project, at least for now, is going strong. But as with any fork like this, things can die down over time and projects can just suddenly stop. I don't want to say this project's still going to be developed in a year or two years from now, but at least temporarily, if you are using Exa, go and use Ezra. The problem with that is packaging, which is in not the best of states right now, because Exa was on pretty much anything you could possibly want. Alpine, Arch, Termax, Debian, Fedora, Gentoo, Homebrew, Macports, Nix, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Void Linux, and then manual installation. Ezra is still a work in progress in that regard. It's on Nix, it's got obviously manual installation through Cargo, Arch Linux, a third party repo for Debian and Ubuntu. It's also on Gentoo, Brew, Macports, and that's pretty much it. So for a lot of things like Fedora, Right now, at least, you're going to be going through the manual installation. Thankfully for me, though, on Arch Linux, I didn't even have to think about it. When I went and updated my system, there was already this replaces package that just did it for me. I know there was a post on Hacker News, so I'd imagine this maintainer probably saw that and then decided to just go and replace the package. I'm happy there is this community fork of Exa that is being maintained and seems like it's probably going to stick around for a while. But I do want to know what happened to the original X maintainer, and I really do hope they're all right. If you happen to know them, please get them to post something on the repo, even just a single comment about it, because nobody really knows what's going on. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you make use of Exa? Do you use LSDRS? Do you use any of these other LS re-implementations, or do you think they're all just a waste of time? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrubs that are pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Rust for Life.